Fortuna. The other guard, number nine, Clark Bautista. At center, number five, Darrell Green. At forward, number 14, Kasim Mirza. And the other forward, number six, Dylan Ababu. Growling Tigers head coach, Pido Harencio. Now check out the starters of your UP Fighting Maroons. At guard, the number nine, Mikey Reyes. The other guard, number 12, Alvin Padilla. At center, number 10, Maggie Sison. At forward, number 16, Mark Urwena. And the other forward, number 14, Martin Reyes. So with, uh, with that, you can see our starting five for today. USD going with a small lineup here. This is the same lineup that they used against FU with Daryl Green at center. And UP going the opposite way, going bigger this time, seeing how that will affect today's game. Oh, really? A, uh a big enigma on the part of Coach Pido. You look at USD, they don't have a natural center. Kasim Mirza is jumping against Maggi Season, and then they're scoring really in, in bunches. So in the case of UP, I think that's an advantage. That's why they're coming up big. Ruena is starting with them together with Maggi Season to complete their 4 and 5 position. USD's tallest player on the floor right now is Kasim Mirza, and he's playing a, a, a power forward, small forward position. How is that going to affect today's game, Professor? Well, definitely, you know, if, if you go on a post-up, that's going to be a problem for USD. As you know, Mikey Reyes, he didn't shot very well in the last game, but now he's starting off with a good pass. It's going to be a problem. Well, let's see, if, if UP gets into the game, who we'll seems to be comfortable running with the uh, with USD. Of course, USD leading the league right now in, in point scoring. We wanted to ask for this, uh, this stat here. The last time any team has ended the first round, with scoring more than 80 points was back in season 70 and it was UE. As you take a look now at this PS Bank's Simply Lang Maasan uh, assist brought to us by PS Bank. Uh, last time, UE season 70, 86.9 points. And that was when they went 14 and 0. Yep. That, the, the big difference there, of course, is the points allowed. Yes, and the uh, USC is allowing more points, 89 per game, and they're not a losing squad. Yes. Uh, as compared to what happened to UP in, in, in uh, Season 70. As we take a look now at this uh, Smart Instant Replay, we're helping sports. Offensive foul on uh, Kasim Mirza. So the ball will go to UP. It was up right now, three to nothing in the early goings because of that three-pointer a while ago by Mikey Reyes. Reyes now driving, dishes it off to Marco Rueda, can't get it. But the ball is tapped oh. away and it will stay with UP. Ruena attacking again, decides to pull it back up to Padilla for three, and he gets it in. Wow. Two, two three-point shots, uh, Aaron, for, for UP. And that's going to open things up for the defense being offered by USD today. USD now, trying to set it up. Daryl Green in the post. Find Dylan Ababu with the paint, and he'll, he gets fouled, and he'll head to the line for two. Speaking of three-pointers, USD is leading the league right now at 33.8, but let's switch it over to the UP side of things and hand it over to Ricky Flores for this Samsung courtside update. Ricky? We are playing to our true potential, was what the coaches of the UP Fighting Maroons described their game against the UE Red Warriors two days ago, turning another loss into something positive. Coach Aboy's main goal for that game was for the Maroons to make it a close fight, but they gave him a little more than that. I'm talking about the eight deadlocks and seven lead changes the Maroons were able to pull against the number three team in the season today. Now that they've proven that they can actually do it, Coach Aboy sends them off to the Tigers' lair with a few reminders. Defensively, stop the transition of the Tigers, and in doing this, you deny them easy baskets. Offensively, be dominant in the paint and get those rebounds. And lastly, in this matchup, be the hunter. The Maroons are going to jump the Tigers as early as possible. Aaron and Randy? Thank you, Ricky, for that court side update. So speaking of jumping out, firing UP. Now we do an 8-1 to one run to start the game. All of these perimeter and uh, Martin Reyes joining. And that's a usual venue on the part of the UP fighting group. It's not from Martin Reyes from the outside. Mike Reyes off and running off of the glass. Can't get it. But the UP fighting Maroons will get another possession. Reyes open for three. No good. And Mirza will pull down that rebound. Eight minutes and four seconds. Two minutes gone in the first period as Daryl Green gets it in the post, working it against Maggi Caesar. Driving. Block, but there's a foul, and he'll head to the line for two more. That's the first foul of uh, Mikey Sisson. And with that, let's head on over to Patch Katsana for the Samsung Court Side Update. Patch? 
Well, Aaron, there is no better way to win but to go against the UP Fighting Maroons. After two consecutive losses, cobwebs cleared and distractions are gone. The Tigers already took her cover with a big bag. They plan to get back on the game and win this first round. Coach Bidal mentioned in yesterday's practice to keep an eye on the shooters, namely Alvin Padilla, Woody Ko, and Martin Reyes. We will pressure them in the court, give them a strong start. The last two games may be disappointing, our defense may have collapsed, and we will improve on that. Pero ika nga niya ang tigrep kapag nasusugatan, lalong umangatake. Aaron? Thank you for that report, Patch. And uh, during that report, the Magic season had to be carried off of the court. Uh, hopefully we can get a report from Ricky Flores in just a little bit on what happened to him, but Daryl Green is now at the line. It's be a tough situation for you. All of a sudden, because of that thing that happened to Magic season, the rotation is a uh, change, and Hudico, very early in the ballgame, has to replace uh, Magic season. So USD able to get that, that second free throw. So other points coming from the free throw line so far. No field goals yet. They're 0 for 2 to start the game. Reyes in the corner, driving, finds Uena. Back out to Mikey Reyes for three. Rins in and out, and Daryl Green will pull down that rebound. Fortuna, now at the helm. Finds Ababu at the wing, pull up jumper. Can't get it, but rebound it to UB, and they're, they're just off to the races, both of these teams. Uh, we were discussing this, whether it would be a slowdown game or an up-tempo game, as Alvin Padilla makes that three-pointer, the second of the game. Well, it's really a question on how you beat defense, why the opponents are scoring a lot on them. They're giving them the good look, they're inviting them to do the run and gun, and so far, UP has answered a call. 11 points for UP, very quick 11 points in less than three minutes here in the first period. And that's coming from a team that is averaging, averaging a league low 6.2 points off of fast breaks, going up against USD, who, who's leading the league at 14.3. Uh, yeah, Magi sees it got in the D, and it's been a, quite a difficult, but we expect it to be back, uh, Aaron, to, to help keep his cost, leading by 9, 11 to 2. Magi sees a uh, Natu Hood now, so uh, he said that he'll be back. He's just, you know, trying, sitting it out for a bit. He will be back in just a little bit. USD, Daryl Green, close. Oh. By Uruena, but Dylan Ababu doing a cleanup job there, getting the first field goal of the game for USD. Well, UP really has to, to back out properly. They might be blocking green, but you know, if you don't seal out and take out Dylan Ababu, and that's, that's obvious because Dylan gets to make his first field goal, and I think that's the first field goal of USD here in the first quarter. It is uh, Professor and Rudy Go driving off the wall. Acrobatic Whoa. shot, looking for the foul as well, but he gets the bucket. And that builds this lead up to nine for the Maroons. Come, coming off a career game, 22 points against Uni. And the uh, bad thing about it is they, they did win that ball game, but a lot of spunk in the game of Rudy Go. Tata Bautista driving. Tapped by Fortuna and above Padilla saves it. Mikey Reyes though slows it down, but turns the ball over. So it's Fortuna running. Trying to take advantage of the, the speed. Ooh. Oh, Daryl Green rejected. Mirza back out to Bautista for three. No good. Green with the offensive board. Can't get it again. And UP will dribble down the ball this time. They decide to slow it down. They know they have the lead. And they want to take control of the momentum. Well, a lot of chances for USD. Not focus, and particularly Green has so many attempts, offensive recoveries, but nothing. But look at Rudy Ko. Rudy so Ko. economical. Taking the momentum he got from last game, using it today. And with that three, we head into a timeout. Brought. Welcome back to live action here on Studio 23. As you take a look now at this shot block brought to us by Rexona. Use Rexona after every bath. Woody Ko, not really known for his defense but showing that he can do everything here today. But he was, you're so precise in uh, analyzing the game of uh, Rudy Ko. He's just you know, taking where he left off in that game uh, against UE. Just made a three-point shot, a, a basket from the inside, five points for Rudy Ko. Rudy Ko now trying to continue when he started driving Ooh. sidestep, but uh, there's a foul called, and uh, the ball will stay with UB and they'll take it out from the sidelines. As you take a look now at this uh, Coca-Cola Open Happiness with this Woody Co shot and Coca-Cola Open Coca-Cola Open Happiness. Look at that reaction. Raising them three fingers. And he... <laughs> Carlo Gomez throws the ball away. And knocks down our cameraman. <laughs> <laughs>
Five minutes done in the first quarter. UB up by 10. USD not only missing their defense, but also missing their offense at uh, this point. Really uh, tough question, tough situation here for UC. But you know, with Jerick Teng back in the game, first substitution off the bench for uh, Coach uh, Miguel Arejo, they need the numbers. Jerick Teng scored 20 points the last time out, so he's on a streak of good games. So is uh, Afuang also in for USD. Bautista from downtown. Uh, a foul off the ball, offensive foul. Coming off of the screen, and I believe that was. Afuang. Foul, yes, on uh, on Melo Afuang. Off the bench, two quick foul for Melo Afuang. But they need to step up. It cannot just be a Mirza Ababu uh, game for USD. These guys don't step up for them. Other than Jerry Ting, I think USD is going to be in trouble in the same in the situation they are in right now with 4 and 43, allowing UP to score 16 points. On your screens right now is your C2 best cheer of the day. Enjoy the best in life with C2 green tea. A good. Uh, matchup we have here. We got uh, freshman uh, Mikey Reyes going up against second year man Tarek Fortuna. The thing is, both of them coming from the South System schools. Yes. Tarek Deng, uh, no, uh, rather Mikey Reyes from the South Green Hills, Tarek Fortuna from the South Zabel. So uh, there, there could be some, some showing which one who is better but back now, in their, their junior year. Yep, and no, no one's green anymore for, for exactly. both of them. One is wearing black, the other one is uh, uh, gold and white. 18 to 6 is the score. Match by the Gomez with a steal. And the ball will go back to UP. Well, here's one revelation. Gomez has been the, uh, a big start really for them. He played a breakout game the, uh, against De La Salle, where he posted double double. And here, he's showing again the spunk of getting the steal for UP. And uh, that steal was caught on our air. Clear precision, stop, clear, man, no danger, just cool air. Foul, and I believe Clark Bautista will be heading to the line for two free throws. A foul on uh, Martin Reyes, two free throws for Taka Bautista. Professor, okay, both of these teams coming off of very different wins. As uh, we take a look now at this smart instant replay, we're helping sports. Very, very different wins. One of them was a blowout. One of them was extremely close in overtime. Which one is harder to bounce back from them? Well, I think for USC's case, because as I mentioned early on, it's been a week long of, uh, of broomstick for them. They lost a heartbreaker to LaSalle in double overtime, and then they got blown on Thursday. In the case of UP, well, they didn't lose twice in a row in uh, this week. They lost close to UE. We're in, you know, from the report of Ricky Flores, saying that, you know, we can compete. So they could be coming in really from a positive note. In the case of USD, it's more on the mental side. You know, you've got to recover mentally and go back again. I don't see the half in Mirza. Mirza is no longer on the floor for USD. That's, uh, I think that's one reason why Coach Pudo took him out. Martin Reyes drills that three in. His first three-pointer of the game. He's now got five in this early going. Aitona gets it to Bautista, and they're going to look to set it up with four minutes on the clock. 15 on the shot clock. Aitona to Bautista. Traveling called and yet another turnover you know, for UST. UP did a lot of this to, to UE in their last game. They were showing a 1 2 2 zone, they're showing a 2 3 zone. And so far, you now new guard in Aitona, they're trying to pressure him, giving him a different look. And with Bautista got the ball, it was really close. In, and uh, they, could not, they could not orchestrate as properly and probably as comfortably that they would want. UP shooting 5 for 7 from the beyond the arc. And while uh, well, their two point shooting is two for four, so they're just clicking on every single cylinder right now. Uh, turnover situation, USD with five, four for UV. That's, that's a close play. Of course, it's the conversion off of the turnovers that built this lead for UV. Mikey Reyes gets his first free throw for this trip to go. He's three for three from the game. And it's Mikey season. We're just waiting for him to recover from the knee contact he suffered a while ago. I was actually talking to Mikey Reyes at the start of the, uh, before the start of the game, and I was asking him, how does it feel that you're the rookie and then you're coming in and there are veteran point guards on this lineup and you're taking over? And he said, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, taking, he's the starting point guard, Mikey Reyes, and uh, coming off the bench for 
that lands up for UP. But it's really a learning curve here for Mike Gregorius playing the UAG. Jarek Kang with the three, finally getting USD in the double digits. 23 to 10 now is the score. Reyes setting it up with 17 on the clock. Working it against Aitana. Taking it all by himself to the rack, but it's blocked by Chris Camos. But Carlo Gomez there to clean up the mess. And Miguel Arenzo on the floor, complaining. He was really very close to the official. And that's going to be a technical foul on Pido Arenzo. He might get another one if he doesn't settle down at this point. He was waiting for the to be the foul called against UP in the last play. As, uh, not getting the breaks of it. Yeah. Sometimes uh, th this is also one of those things that could also fire up UST. The correct, uh, a you know, he, he can see the pepper in the game of UST. He gets a technical area. Yeah, he's a very he's a grizzled player and coach. And he just might turn it the juice for, uh, for UST. It's going to be two free throws plus ball possession here for UP. Mikey Reyes now, 5 for 5 from the line. He has 8 points already here today. Gets it, so he's 6 for 6. And, you know, that's performing under pressure for a rookie. You know, only averaging 2 points per ball game prior to this game. Already has 9. Look at the score. UP, 3 minutes ago, 25 points. Only 10 for USP. UP to inbound. Woody Cole gets the ball. Tapped away, Chris Camus off of the board, and he gets it in. So that could be it. That is the spark that could ignite UST, and that is why Coach Aboy Castro called for this timeout, and this timeout is brought to us by Samsung. When we take a look now at our uh, matchup today, our tip-to-top player matchup to be exact, brought to us by Selecta Corneto, tip-to-top setup. Jarek Tang taking on Alvin Padilla, both in their first year here in the UAAP. Martin Reyes blocked by Chris Camos. Beautiful defensive play there by UST. Jarek Deng on the other side, can't get it. But Dylan Nababu off of the board and he does. Let's talk about you know, from defense to offense. Because UP contested, it should have been a goal tending. Nababu getting his point. And look at Camos coming Camus. in with the steal. Camos with the steal, Aitona. Pull up jumper. No good, but Woody Cole will get that defensive rebound. During that timeout, UST crowd finally getting into it. Earlier with that technical with uh, that three-pointer by Martin Reyes, that technical by uh, so you can see that everybody is starting to get involved in today's game. That second triple for Martin Reyes, that's not a good sign for UST because UP is coming from the perimeter. Jarek Deng to Malik C. Driving back out to Aitana from downtown. He strikes oh, oh. it home. Wow. Now UST is starting to fight his game from the first Shots on the outside for them a minute and 15 remaining here in the first quarter. With a team that scores the way that USD does, you definitely cannot count this team out oh, at yes, any point know. in the game. But don't, don't be complacent. You think you've got them locked down and they're going to come back with you and start scoring. This uh, three-pointer by Martin Reyes is our open happiness with uh, Coca-Cola three-pointer. Open Coca-Cola, open happiness. Loving that reaction. He can feel it right now. Oh, Two yes. three-pointers, perimeter shot to start the game. This is probably that breakout game that Martin Reyes has been needing as of late. That really needs me and me, and we're waiting for that breakout game for, for Martin Reyes. And uh, seemingly, you know, from, the, from the report, that, you know, it's a positive thing from the loss. They took a positive game. You're going to come out, you can compete, and so far, you'll be showing this guy, Mark Lopez, look at his numbers, 9.4 boards. You know, I think he's in regulation. We have been waiting for his, for his game, and I think it's coming out for Mark Lopez to be. Maliksi driving, hop step, pull up from the free throw line, gets it in. Oh, so now it's down to nine points here today. Lopez driving off of the glass, no good. And Maliksi with another rebound. UST running as usual from the, from the key. Short, Jared Thing with the offensive rebound, and he puts it up there. And just like that, you thought that UST was down, they come up with quick points. 21 points, 28 of UP, minute remaining. Would you go now? Martin Reyes from three again, hits nothing but air, and UST controlling the tempo now, forcing UP to run with oh. the combos all alone, blocked by Magic Caesar, though. And UP will 
little counterattack. Woody goes crossover off of the oh, oh, oh. Wow. wow! Did you see that power of Woody go? You know, it's like a slow motion guy and who's doing the crossover, but so effective. Biggest output after one quarter this season from USD was 32 against NU back in July 16. So UP now two points away from matching that one. USD now with 11 on the shot clock. Dang, Amaliksi rather. Blocked and Braganza. Uh, Martin Reyes from the wing, no good. And there's a foul on Aitana. So the ball will stay with UP. They'll have the last shot as well. And uh, now that move by, that you were talking about earlier by Woody Go is our Powerade hyper play of the quarter. Drink up, power up. Sports is what you make it. The jump of Woody Go, it's like he was standing on a can of sardines. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at this, and it's a flat sardine can that he was stepping on when he made that shot. Speaking of Woody Go, he's uh, one of our candidates for a Jum Yum, a Jollibee Yum doubles duo. Enjoy the best things in life alongside Alvin Padilla. Uh, Braganza can make it 31 points for UP with 19 seconds remaining. Oh, they were just marveling for a while. Only 10 points scored by UST, but in a half, Christopher Camus came up with uh, two steals and four points and uh, they scored 21. UP now with 31, 10 point advantage. This could be the last possession of the quarter, you know. Braganza now uh, making it one for two, so UST will take the last shot and Chris Camus controlling the ball at the top of the key. I don't know if uh, that's what Coach Pido wants to have his big man calling the play. Maliksi now, three on the clock. Pull up. Gets it off in time, but no basket. So at the end of the first 10 minutes of play, here in our main event, UP attacking from the get-go, leading 31 to 21. Professor, what do you see so far here today? What well, UP, but you know, more fantastic is the shooting that they have exposed here against USC. That's why they have 31 points, the biggest output that they've scored all season long in the first quarter. Our leading scorer and our champ of the game candidate, Big Burger Goodness, is Mikey Reyes. We'll head to a short break when we come back. The start of the second period of play here on Studio 23. And as well as the replays on Balls Channel 34. Turnover by USC to start off the second quarter. And Padilla now gets it to Braganza. Nine minutes still remaining. This is gonna be an awesome second quarter because both teams are firing hot. You know, that close out the first. Yeah, interesting era. I just looked at the numbers of uh, UP, but first, now let's go to this precision stop. This uh, clear precision stop, clear men, no dandruff, just cool hair. That steal by, completed steal by Maggi Caesar. But Aaron, prior to this game, UP was only averaging 36.7 in terms of field goal shooting. In the first quarter, they shot 47% from the field. Wow! Magic season, making that basket, so improving that field goal percentage even more. Yes, so one of one here, start the <laughs> second period. Aitana now to set things up. Looking for Maliksi in the post, but drives it himself. Off of the glass, no good, but there will be a foul on, uh, I believe that's Mark Lopez. You know what's so evident with USD right now? They're, they're not really running their plays. Take a look at this. Uh, As, uh, this Maasan assist brought to us by PS Bank, simply lang Maasan. That foul earlier was on uh, Braganza, correction. You know, uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity. You know, This morning, I had a chance to talk to former fighting baroon, Josan Cervantes, who gave me uh, the best accommodation possible in an airplane. <laughs> and his heart really was beating, saying, you know, we could have won the game against UE, but they're going to be back. And so far, UP showing a lot of spunk coming off from that loss last Thursday. Lopez now off of the turnover. He's one of the best Whoa. guys in the league, but he's blocked by Derek Fortuna, the smallest guy on the floor with a big rejection. You know, he's one, one candidate I really have for the most improved player this season, Jerry Fortuna. Look at this, covering very well, knowing where Mark Lopez will be taking that shot. And that is our Rexona shot block. Use Rexona after every bat. Ball will stay with UP. So with 18 seconds remaining now on the shot clock. Well, I think it's going to be a good matchup. Look at the uh, Camus and Woody go. I think no quarters given or taken here 
it will it will really be a battle between these two guys. As the referee's talking to them, you know, why don't you make friends on the floor? <laughs> And with that, let's send it over to Ricky Flores for the Samsung card side update. Ricky? In today's People Journal, a headline reads, Tigers face dangerous Maroons. And this has held true for the Maroons after the first quarter. Coach Aboy praised the energy and discipline of his team and said that they should maintain this the whole game. Seeing that they can penetrate UST's defense, assistant coach Buti Devera told the team, Kayang kaya natin mag-drive, huwag kayo mainlap sa labas. Coach Aboy also made it known before the game that Chris Camus is one of the hard-working Tigers and this lead will ignite the fire within him. They respect this and are looking to contain him as long as he's on the court. Aaron? Thank you, Ricky. See, the difference with being an extreme energy player, you might, you know, get a little too carried away as we look now at that unsportsmanlike foul that was called on him. Ooh, and it was caught on our Smart Instant Replay where Elvin Sports getting a little too physical right there. Well, you remember Chris Camus was uh, given a sportsman-like foul in last Sunday when he threw a punch at uh, Maui uh, Villanueva yes. of De La Salle. Was, a referee was given him, he was not suspended in last Thursday's ball game, and now he's off to another... Probably a good matchup with Goa. Coach with Goa saying, you need you use your head. We need you in the game with the pull your head. With, uh, he, he was taken out with Woody Go. But eight points now for uh, Woody. And the Woody Go now, yeah, with eight points. As we, we take a look now at this replay yet again. Oh, yeah, that was a... We're just bruising each other out. And right in front of the referee as well. But see, Professor, that was the one thing. I mean, there's there's a difference between being an energy player and an impact player from being kind of careless sometimes. Well, it, it was really a careless. It was really a, a non, it, it probably puts a, a non-thinking gesture <laughs> on, on, on your end because what are at stake? Your game, the game of your team. It's not just you who's being attacked on a mano-a-mano uh, situation, but your team you know, relies so much on your uh, energy and your game. Here go now at the free throw line. Pulls back out to Braganza. Step in jumper, no good. But Derek King will pull it down. Stolen by Padilla. Back to Manchester season. Into Woody Cole. Fouled and he'll head to the line for two more free throws. Great recognition on UP to take advantage of that of those uh, uh, the, the mismatches on the fast break. You know, Maji Sisson would have taken the shot, but he would have elected, he elected to give it to Rudico, who obviously, no, he is the leader. Look at the strip here, and then they will create a situation, and even Maji Sisson, more veteran than uh, Rudico, giving it to the leader, Ko, for that shot. And uh, that steal was caught on our clear precision stop. Clear man, no dandruff, just cool hair. Third foul now on Jerick Fortuna. And uh, speaking of UST, let's send it over to Patch Kansana from UST for this Samsung courtside update. Patch? The Tigers consider this as a turning point game and Coach Bedoy is very unhappy with the bad calls of the ref. But despite this, the boys will remain focused in today's game. Like what I said earlier, the defense is today's thing. Coach ordered the boys to box out on the big men of UP. Tandaan nyo, tao mo, responsibilidad mo. Talking about their one-on-one -on -one defense, remember that this is ball pressure all the way. Limit your fouls and turnovers. Be conscious of the shot clock and boys. Challenge Martin Reyes and Woody Ho. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you, Pat. See, the main thing there is that USC going with a man-to-man -man because they can't stick with the zone because of how hot UP has shooting from beyond the arc. Well, really, if you're shooting very well, the zone will be almost ineffective. I mean, you got shooters like Martin Reyes and Rudico destroying the zone look of uh, USP. Kasim Mears has still yet to get on board with that three and he misses it. And UP will look to set it up. Lopez over to Rudico from downtown. No good. Rebounded by Clark Bautista. All the way blocked by Lopez, but there was a, uh, you know, caught a little bit of the body. Now it's so a turn of UP. UP to say, hey, wasn't that all ball? And that block, well, foul caught on our smart instant replay. We're helping sports. What do you think, Professor? It was close to that, but obviously he got the ball. Now whether the contact of uh, Lopez and uh, of Juan, no? uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, of Juan. Juan. It was sufficient for the referee to call it a foul. And Afuang missing long on that free throw. Afuang missing uh, his first free throw. Mirza also yet to get on to the scorer's board right now. This is what we were talking about at the get-go. If you take out Kasim Mirza, 
from the equation, how much of a difference will it make to the game? But Ababa is not also as explosive as he should be in the absence of production coming from Kasim Mirza. He has five points in the game, all in the first quarter, scoreless still in the second. Bautista now off of the turnover. No good, no foul called either. And UP will counterattack here in the second quarter. Seven minutes and 30 to go. Lopez attacking, charge called. Could be making up for that, uh, that last call. Well, gotta give it that way. The referee saw it that uh, Lopez was a little too aggressive uh, on that part. 36-22, still UP controlling this ball game. The offense of USD is still smothering. They're looking, they're looking for that spurt that would get them going, but bad news for them, Martin Reyes, the best new shooter coming out of uh, UP is back in the ball game. Martin Reyes, who has 10 points, uh, no, no, eight points rather here today. Here's a working it in the post. Spin move, takes it back out, blocked by Magic Season, and UP off to the races. Padilla. Gets it to Braganza, who will try and set it up. Udiko from beyond the arc, trying to drive, double team, travels. That's the right call, that's the right call. Good defense on him, double teaming when he was starting to move. But Udiko now with eight, nine points, three for four from the field, with two points to boot. And we look now at our Silver Works hardcourt heartthrob of the game, Derek Teng. And uh, there is no substitute. UST in the second quarter, 0 for 4 from the field, UP 1 for 4, and uh, UST with two turnovers to UP's three. So the offensive, you know, prowess that both teams were having, they were both clicking in the first, now seems to be escaping them here in the early goings of the second quarter. Cooling down effect, you know, you put it there. Ababu now gets his first basket in the second period, giving him now seven points here today. Braganza. Reyes from downtown, can't strike it in, and Bautista taps the ball away. That wasted opportunity for USD. As you take a look now at this strong power move, brought to us by PS Bank, simply lang maaasahan. And a veteran in uh, Dylan Ababu, he couldn't really get his shot going. He knew he had the advantage over Padilla coming from the outside, making it like all his field goals are made from that side area, if you notice, from the left side. Padilla back out to Gomez from beyond and can't get it. And Mirza will get the rebound. Fouled by Padilla, and that was the right call. The reach yeah, call from behind. From behind, a little too, too tempting for Padilla to try to get the candy off the hands of uh, Patrick Mirza. Second foul on uh, Padilla. So him and Lopez now with two fouls. Six minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this quarter. UP still up by 12. Both, uh, both of them not really striking while the iron is hot. I mean, UP could have built this lead to even bigger with USD struggling at the get-go. USD not able to close in so far here in the second quarter. Well, mostly the, the defense has been adjusting very well. And look at Ababa just using his experience over the, over the younger Padilla. Padilla. So he draws that foul and he'll head to the line for two. That is veteran play right there. His third foul now for Padilla. You know, it's really very difficult to guard him. Uh, he sleeps you off, you know, off his, in his moves. You think he's not going to drive you, and then he'll just explode slightly or just enough to get you off rhythm. One of the only players, really, in the UAP that has that triple threat move. The guy that can pull up from the mid-range jumper. He can drive. He can also dish. You know, he, such a, a versatile player in Dylan Ababu. And speaking of versatile, Chris Camus is also one of those players. Yep. He could be versatile if he's on the floor. Yes. And the problem is, you know, Coach Pido saying, you know, you can help us if you're on the floor, but with the way you've been acting in that uh, a sportsman like Paolo, you're going to sit You're gonna sit long on a bench and not help the team. Dylan Ababu now with nine points in today's game. Braganza now working it against a uh, uh, full court trap, rather uh, three quarter. Gomez in the post. No good, and he's fouled in the head of the line for two. UST now shifting things around, going with the uh, pretty much half court press to slow down the, the setting of play of UP. But you know, they think that's the right idea when Maggie Season, who's supposed to be inside, is playing the high low, giving it to Gomez. UST really has no post defender. So you go to Gomez, maybe slow, maybe not as efficient, but you'd be able to do something about it. And the adjustment quickly seek by Coach Vido by bringing in Camus, who more or less would be bodying up. Here's, his, here's your fourth player who doesn't really body up against his, uh, his opponent. Carlo Gomez gets the first free throw to go. And that's what we were talking about at the get-go. Uh, 
UST not really that dominant when it comes to defending the inside, but UP not really that dominant when it comes to scoring on the inside because their big men play the perimeter, you know, even when he goes three pointers. So we'll see how that'll come into effect today as Carlos Gomez gets the second one to go as well. He's got two points here today. Six minutes remaining in the second quarter. Clark Bautista to the wide open. Jarek Dang strikes it all. Wow. Well, I think he's in a different zone. The last three games that he's played, he's getting more confident in his game, coming off the bench, giving them the number. Two three-pointers for him as Braganza converts on the other end. And there's a timeout call by Coach Fidel Arancho and the UST Growling Tigers. And this timeout is brought to us by Samsung. With Samsung, imagination lives. Seven points. And Clark Bautista looking to get it to Dylan Ababu, who sets the pick. Double team now, cutting, but no, the ball is tapped away, and it will stay with UST with 10 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Well, I think they were just lucky with that play, the two-man game with uh, Ababu, cutting and the ball being given up. There were a lot of uh, guys in black ready to pounce on Dylan Ababu had he received that ball inside the shaded area. Ababu now, pull-up jumper from the inbound play, Chris Camus. Doing what he does best, and that's just being active. Yep, offensive boards that's really going to help the game of uh, USC, but they're going to pull some stops here. That's why UP is still at the lead. They're not able to make the stops when they wanted to. UST now down by nine, which uh, the lead was biggest at 16. As Martin Reyes for three, no good. But Carlo Gomez taps it back out to himself. Lopez with the push, no foul call. Magic season gets it to go. That, that, that's big. They were able to come up with a recovery. Imagine season. So he, his game really is on the perimeter. The shooting basket from about 12, uh, 15 feet out. And to further that point, that UP doesn't really have that many inside players. They're dead last in the league as Dylan Ababu scores in the paint. Okay. UP is dead last in points in the paint, while UST is number one despite not having a dominant set. Well, because of Dylan Ababu coming up with an offensive board, doing the recoveries, you know, he felt that you know the, the three-point play here really is coming because it was tough. It was tough inside. And that move is caught on our Smart Instant Replay. We're helping sports. But also the main thing that uh, UST, why UST is leading the league in points in the paint is they're also leading the league in fast break points. Yep. And that leads to layups, yes. points in the paint. You know, that's why they are the highest scoring team in the league. Yeah, Dylan Ababu leading UST in terms of score. 11 points and three boards. Almost, almost there, but not quite. Still a nine-point advantage for UP. 4 and 42 remaining. Dylan Ababu with 11 points here. And uh, Lopez now trying to work it against Camus. He sees that he has some size differential. Magic sees it now against Kasim Mirza. Back out to Martin Reyes. Pull up, jumper. No good. Rebounded by Tata Bautista and Derek Dang off and running. Foul. And he doesn't get the basket to go. That is what Derek Dang did a whole lot against LaSalle. Getting the foul, making the basket, heading to the line, you know, off of the transition, getting the contact, and you know, get finding those easy baskets from the free throw line. Yeah, but he, 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 the, the learning of uh, Derek very quick in terms of the system of Coach Pido Harenjo, understanding his system. The good thing for UST, Jerry Ting is coming up as you take a look at the father, Alvin Ting, who, who is really very much into this ball game. Look at the number, double figures. He's got nine points already, averaging 12 per ball game. Jerry Ting, he has taken up the spot of Kasim Mirza in providing the one-two punch for UST. Jerry Ting now 10 points, three for four from the field with three rebounds to go along with Dylan Ababu's 11 points. Mikey Reyes driving. Taking it all the way, but he's blocked by Kasim Mirza. So it'll stay with UP with 10 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Really a tough uh, area there for Mikey Reyes to operate. Really, I mean, the, the, the size advantages are towards UST. As uh, speaking of UST, we see it's been a seat as Francisco alongside Jeff Spoon there uh, earlier on the screen. Whitico will head to the line right now for two more free throws. And what's stopping really UST is in their climb back to the ball game. Some of the occasional fouls, just like that one. UP has not had a field goal for quite some time now, but because of the foul in the act of shooting, two free throws given for Woody Ko. Woody Ko, of course, wearing that face mask. He's three for four from the free throw line. He didn't, he never really seemed to show discomfort with wearing that, that face mask. I think he's 
very much well like that, but it's no easy thing. Is that Mike Gamboa? Mike Gamboa on your screens as well now is uh, Ali Malik C. Okay, the bench of uh, both camps really caught cool. 10 points and three boys. This is off the bench for Coach Aboy Castro. Would he go now? Gets it to go, so he's two for two from the line. He is now five for six from the uh, from the free throws drive. Twelve points here today in the second in the first half rather. Ababu, Bautista hesitated from three. That's why he was short. Camus trying to save it, but it's too late. The ball was shift sides to UP. So a stop there uh, by UP in terms of their offensive USD, giving them another shot at it. They have a Nine point advantage, 44 to 35. As you see Ryan Gregorio on uh, your screen. A former coach of uh, UP when we started the coverage for the uh, UAP way back in 2000, 2001. Lopez, looking to operate. Finds Mikey Reyes, scoreless so far in the second quarter. 10 seconds on the shot clock, double team. Good pressure there, rather, yep. by Bautista saving the possession with great basketball IQ for Mikey Reyes. Seven seconds to shoot here for the Fighting Maroons. Seven on the shot clock. Rudy Co asking for it in the paint. Ball tapped away. No, no time taken off of the shot clock. So still at seven. UP will try an inbound yet again. Multiple picks off of the inbound. Finds Martin Reyes. Back out to Mikey Reyes from three. No good. And Derek Tang will pull down that rebound. Bautista to Ababu. Straight from three. No good. Uh, no, no shot, rather. Finds Mirza wow. finally scoring off of the bat, off of the cut on the inside. Well, that's an important basket. So Ababu involving Kasim Mirza. That could open the can of baskets for Kasim. Timeout now brought to us by coverage here of UAB Season 72 on Studio 23. That last play is our Alexan FR power fast play of the game. Body paint guides on Agat Talab of Alexan FR. UP now finds Magic Season oh. in the paint all alone. And probably the easiest two points that he's going to score all day. Great find really Woodico doing it all here for UP. Rebounding, now assisting aside from uh, making the shots here in the first half. Kick ball, so uh, the shot Kick clock ball. will reset to 24. 24 seconds. Nine point lead now for UP. UP shot six for nine from beyond the arc in that last quarter. Now 0 for four as we take a look now at the two guys that have become extremely hot, Derek Tang and Dylan Ababu. They are Jolly B Young Doubles duo candidate. Enjoy the best things in life. Wow. Dylan Ababu just taking control of the situation right now. Well, that's really the experience and the talent that Dylan Ababu is showing. Oops. Oh, and the inexperience of UP pushed by Chris Camus. So that UP was behind Chris UP. Camus. <laughs> so he, he saw everything. UP will regain possession here. Two minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the first half. Camus, foul number two. Are they in the penalty? Yes. Oh, that's going to be two free throws. It could have been a lost ball already there for, for UP. As Rudico was trying to save it and shot, shot clock running down in the game of uh, the Fighting Maroons. So instead, because of the push that you're seeing right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, there's the Clear touch. Up. And of course, Mark Lopez had to make the extra With the, you know, theatrics. A little acting doesn't hurt anybody. As if the push was, was, was enough to, to make him fly in the air. Lopez, though, not uh, taking advantage of his trip to the free throw line. 0 for 3 from the line today. Lopez out of uh, FEU High School. Very athletic guy. Averaging 9 points per game. Gets his first free throw to go in his first points of the game. Tata Bautista now. 18 on the shot clock. 20, 2 minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the first half. The beautiful pass by Dylan Ababu. No basket though from Chris Camus. Wasted opportunity for USD. Mikey Reyes to Woody Cole. Driving now. Ball tapped away. It was it was stay rather with UP. Dangerous pass there for Woody Cole. Nowhere to go really for you, Woody. And uh, now you see our Ampeton built body to increase uh, increased body mass. We have Mel Guile, of course, of USD, age 24. He's, no, he's still looking pretty good. Still in tip-top shape. 
I don't like that frame. Right? <laughs> you know, you be turning the ball over, giving an opportunity for USC to come close under two minutes here in the first half. Here's Camus. 19 on the shot clock. One minute and 53 seconds in the first half remaining. Ababu loves this position here, especially against the smaller Lopez driving. Kasim Mirza driving as well. Jarek Deng tries his hand at it. Off of the glass Whoa. and he gets it in. Beautiful play there by UST. Third time was a charm off of that drive and the lead is now down to 16. Mikey Reyes driving, blocked by Chris Camus. Woody ball wide open from deep. It's nothing but air, but Mikey Reyes with a cleanup job. Wow. Reyes yeah, positioning himself properly and timing on his shot. Biggest first half, uh, first half output rather of the season before this game was UP with 37. Uh, that was UP's biggest output rather against Adamson back in July 18. And UP scoring again. 51 points now in the first half. There's still one minute to go. First quarter was the biggest output of UP at 31. Now they have 51 points. Second quarter ain't done yet with 50 seconds remaining. Clark Bautista gets it to Derek Dang, driving. Double clutch shot blocked by Maggi Season as yet. Maggi has not yet gotten into his uh, offensive game, but he's just still showing that he can do it on the defensive end. As you take a look now at our Powerade Hyper Play of the quarter, uh, drink up, power up, sports is what you make it. That beautiful move by Jarek Deng. Bautista for three, no good. And Maggi sees him with the rebound. Throws the ball oh. away, the wasted opportunity for UP. Ababu driving, finger roll, no good. And UP still running, dribbles it off his foot as Mark Lopez turns the ball over. And Bautista running. Beautiful pass to Mears and he's fouled by Woody Cole. A beauty foul there for Woody Cole. Well, Hilder's killed their game. We've seen a <laughs> back and forth for USC and UP. Both of them turning the ball over, running off of misses. Just non-stop transition play for both teams. And nearly uncontrolled as you Braganza coming in to put some order into the game for the offense. UP, well, they're going to get the ball back. 17.4 seconds. UP needs some orchestration. They need to come up with a good number here. And a missed free throw by Mirza. But you know, we, we really noticed Aaron, since that loss to the Sal last yes. Sunday, Mirza is trying to recover the, the swagger in his ball game. Would he go no problem with his ball game? Yeah, no, no, no problem at all. Because Mirza, of course, he, he seemed to, to be different in that last game compared to what he had a couple games ago yep. before that La Salle game. I mean, there, there's, there seems to be that lack of, of swagger, so to say, from him. UST cutting the lead now to single digits. Mikey Reyes making sure that UP will take the last shot. Stolen oh. by Clark Bautista, though. Beautiful swipe off and running, and that will do it. Exactly what UST wanted to do to end the first half, cut the lead down to single digits because it is hard to come back from double digits after the first half. Oh, it's really a big thing and tough on the part of Mikey Reyes to do the crossover in front of uh, Tata Bautista at midcourt. You're live with us here on Studio 23 for the UAAP as Woody Cole takes his first shot of the second half. No good, but he'll head to the line for two. Speaking of, we were talking about UST earlier, especially Dylan Ababu with Jarek Deng. They've combined for 25 points, 9 for 15 from the field. The rest of the Growling Tigers have only combined for 19. So still, we've, you've taken out Kasim Mirza from the equation. You put in Jarek Deng. UST is still playing the game that they should be playing. Yep, it's a regular game. The one-two combination, 44 points on track to be to beat their, their average number. You know, but the good thing that I saw, just the start of the third quarter, to take a look at Kido Harit, shouting instructions. Mutiko and uh, Chris Campbell seem to have uh, cooled down and realized that you know, it's a game that they have to play. And for the sake of their teams, uh, they got to do it on the merits of the game and no emotions, less emotions, just the fire to keep the energy for both squads. Woody Cole goes one for two. He's now thir 13 points here in the game. Bautista, too hard of a pass from Jack Fortuna, but he still regains possession, driving off of the glass. No good, but Mirza able to clean it up, giving him five points 
in today's game. Still a whole lot far, so far away from his average for the season. Oh, but he needs to blow up the ground since uh, going down to double digits in the second half, the second quarter. Reyes to Lopez for three, no good. But it's Martin Reyes with the rebound and he'll, the ball will stay with UP. Both teams being very active when it comes to the offensive board as you take a look now at this strong power move brought to us by PS Bank. Simply lang maaasahan. Kasim Mirza just doing whatever he can to score. Lopez now to Reyes for three. Whoa. Gets it in! Giving him a second three-pointer of the game. 14 points in this game, surpassing what he has made throughout the whole season. Melo Aplan, no good. Mirza with the offensive rebound. Double team, no foul called. And he'll decide to bring it back out. Bautista for three, no good. But he, but Thomas gets it away. But it goes to Reyes in the easy layup for UP. Builds this lead back up to double digits. A good change of pace here for Marty Reyes. He didn't speak fast. He let go of uh, Tata Bautista for the discipline. Fortuna driving. Double team. Doesn't get it, but Thomas with the offensive rebound. Over to Mirza. Guarded by Lopez. Pull up jumper from beyond the arc, no good. And Mikey Reyes with the rebound. Ball tapped away, but he regains possession. Woody Cole to Martin Reyes for three. Turns Whoa. it home. Wow, you see that movement. Third, third three pointer by Martin Reyes. What a run to start out the third quarter. UP now up by 14. And that leads us to a timeout brought to us by Samsung with Samsung Imagination Lives. You're back with us here on Studio 23. That three-pointer by Martin Reyes. Open happiness with that shot and that bump right there. And Coca-Cola, open Coca-Cola, open happiness. UST now being thrown apart here as UP goes on a 9-1 to one point, a 9-2 point run to start this half. The question that we Babu and uh, Jerry they did not start the second half. When they were trading, it's an easy opportunity to really do that. And so, before the timeout, Coach Pido made the adjustment by bringing in Ababu and take back the line. Let's see what the adjustments are for USTs. We send it over to Pat, Patch Kansana for the Samsung courtside update. Patch? Well, Eric, there were no long faces in the dugouts, but boys and coaches that are more determined to start the second half stronger. Do not let the Maroons drive to the basket. Keep our composure. Everyone is supporting you in return. Let's work harder. Be into the offense. Attack with confidence. Never hesitate. We will set our good screens. Do not be pressured with the calls. If the Maroons are playing with intensity, we will attack with a greater intensity. Contest every single shot. Stick to your man and never give them their easy basket. Coach also specifically told Dylan Ababu to do his thing, do what he does best, scoring points, and guys, no mental lapse. Aaron? Thank you for that report, Patch. And speaking of Dylan Ababu, during that report, he made a three. And now Derek Fortuna converts on that leaner. Nine point lead now for UP. And again, Professor, we were talking about that. Dylan Ababu and, you know, Jarek Tang not starting the second half. And that was what they needed. They needed that offensive spark to come up and, and you know, take care of the, the lead that UP had. And from the time out of Coach Bido, five points scored. That's a. Uh Dylan Ababu, and they've had two stops against UP. The lead is down to nine points. Some momentum here on the side of you. Jarek Tank to Dylan Ababu. Working it against Mark Rueda. Spin move. Double team. No good. And the ball will go to UP. And with that, speaking of UP, let's send it over to Ricky Flores for this Samsung courtside update. Ricky? After the half, Coach Aboy addressed the three turnovers his boys made at the end of the second quarter. He said they should not get excited about fast breaks. Instead, they should be patient. Coach, Ab Coach Aboy also wants the Maroons to do a better job on rebounding to avoid the Tigers to score check second chance points as they have 10 already. Finally, Coach Aboy has stressed the importance of finishing strong every quarter. They've done it for the past two quarters. Why shouldn't they do it for the remaining two? Aaron? Thank you for that report, Ricky. As Marco Dueno misses that one, taps the ball away is Lopez, and UP will have a fresh 24. Lopez into the paint, blocked by Malik C. Beautiful defensive gem there. 
Well, you, have, you see the intensity of the two teams now. They know the importance of this ball game. And they try to, you know, really go at it eye to eye. Look at that block. That beautiful block is our Exona. Shot block use Exona after every bat. Rudy Kodo does convert. And uh, this lead is going from double digit, single digit, back and forth. No team has yet been able to still make a run. Jarek Deng. Whoa, whoa! Woo. Amazing double clutch <laughs> that this guy has. And I, I can't even remember Alvin Teng doing that. So this guy <laughs> is showing a lot of offensive prowess. Playing a lot like Joseph Yo does. I wonder what they feed these guys in Savior. You know, we'll give them that <laughs> hang time that they have. Well, it's really the energy. So take a look at Jerick Teng. Oh, very, foul, very impressed with the game Deng. of this young man. His first. first foul on Jerick Teng. 62 53, down by nine points are the Tigers. Jerick Teng now with a, a, a total of 14 points in today's game. Moruena with a foul called oh, oh. on, off the ball foul on Manixi, who was trying to hold on to Martin Reyes. Trying to make sure that he doesn't get free and gets an easy inbound play going for UP. They really have to mark uh, Martin Reyes. Reyes is getting use of the screens and going to his sweet spots. Moruena to Lopez. Foul will be called on Mikey Reyes. Off the ball, offensive foul called on him. Three team fouls against UP here in the third. Only two for USP, five and 36 remaining. Jerick Fortuna setting the game, the play up. Dylan Ababu looking for the screen. Guarded heavily by Mark Urwena, and there's a foul called on him. Yep. Saw it right in front of me. Yes. Gave him a little bit of a punch. Not really a punch, but you know, a little nudge. You know, what Urwena did is just, you know, put his face on yes. Dylan Ababu. You know, Dylan should, should keep his cool, you know. Yung mga simpleng bigay yun eh. You know, being an experienced player in Dylan. Take a look at this one. Look Let's at the left arm of a Dylan. Let's see uh, what happens here. Oh, there, there it is. Go. There it is. Under the shirt. Yeah. Going Grabbing through it the up head. a little bit. Urwena to Lopez. 18 on the shot clock. Down to Woody Cole. No good off of the turnaround, but Badilia with the rebound. They'll look to set it up with a fresh 24. They give it to their point guard, Mikey Reyes, to set up a play. Urwena with the screen. Reyes driving, dishes it to Woody Cole. No basket as there's a foul called on Dylan Ababu. Wow. I think he was in the restricted area yep. called for that blocking foul. You know, Reyes was already airbound and then Ababu stepped into that uh, space. Third foul on Dylan. That could be problems for UST as they were looking to finally make that run now that Dylan Ababu is in foul trouble. And he's going to be replaced by Chris Camus as, as I see him walking to the bench. Or he will stay. Yes. This is going to be a big gamble on the part of Coach Mido. Because Mikey Reyes, 6 for 6 from the line. He gave him his life for, yes. for, for Mikey Reyes. Ababu stays on the floor. Camus comes in to replace Maliksi. This is a pretty big lineup considering the usual lineup that UST has. I mean, Camus, Ababu, Mirza, Fortuna, and Jarek Teng on the floor for UST. While it's Horuena, Mikey Reyes, Alvin Padilla, Lopez, and Woody Cole. On the floor for UP. Almost an offensive rebound off of the miss by Mike Reyes, but USD will set it up with just under five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Fortuna gets it to Tang, driving. Double clutch again, no basket. And Woody Paul playing tremendous defense so far. Foul on Lopez. Basket will not count. Wow, it's really a match scramble out there. <laughs> if you look at the players, going back to the top of our coverage. If UP loses this game, they join Adamson at the bottom. So that's, that's how important it is for UP. In the case of USC, they want to get to that fourth win. And this foul is uh, caught on our smart instant replay. We're helping sports. We were talking about it earlier. If UP loses today, being that uh, Adamson beat them, they will be in last place. Yes. If they win today, they will be in seventh place. And, you know, two wins will not be as far from probably the fourth team, yes. fourth place team, which most probably will have four wins. Yes. Going to the second round, that is a more manageable uh, situation for them. In the case of USD, they've gone into two consecutive losses, and at three, they want a better chance to take a The Sibirs are trying to make sure that they're on track for a rally, and probably for a fourth win here in the first round. Mears are now with seven points after starting really cold, pretty much picking up the slack here in the second half. Noticing that his outside shooting isn't really going to be the way that he's going to score. 
attacking the basket, working on the inside is what he's planning on doing. Braganza to, Lop uh, to Reyes, rather, Padilla, 16 on the shot clock. Gets it to Maggi Season, stripped, but he puts it back up, no good. And UP with another offensive board. Padilla to Mikey Reyes to set it up. Braganza to Padilla. Passes it into Maggi Season, turn around, jumper, no good, offensive rebound, no. And it's a, the ball will stay to you with UST. Mirza running off of the glass and he'll head to the line for two free throws. So the most fouled UST player to see Mirza go into the field. And what a time for Mirza to compose himself here in the third period. Just down by seven points from Ohio, 14 here in the third. Third foul on Mark Urwena as you take a look at our Jack and Jill fantastic moment. Jack and Jill snacks, life's fun. Both teams have more, much reason to cheer at this point. But you know, both coaches, you know, working extra hard here to keep the the crowd into the ball game. You know, crowd of UST standing up, they, they know that they need the energy coming from their end. To get the players. And you know, Birsa barely making it there, you know, begging the, the this basketball one. gods. See the, the, the miraculous Mirza. Uh, <laughs> hey, 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 we can use that. <laughs> Mirza looking for his uh, second free throw. Gets it to go. So now he has nine points, picking up the slack, shooting three for four from the line here today. Well, Martin Reyes has turned it back in the game to give some numbers. 11 to 2 run in favor of USC in the last four minutes. Where did that offensive prowess that UP had at the start of the third quarter go? Buruena misses the shot. Mirza taps the ball away, and there is a foul called on a UP player. Who is it? I believe it's, oh, it's, it's a foul on uh, Jarek Dang, rather. Oh, that's number two. Clear out foul, I believe. Second foul on him. Lead is now down to only two possessions Five for USC. You know, but the thing is, the foul is a free throw shooting foul because they're in the penalty for USD and Martin Reyes is pretty making much. sure that there's going to be a lot more space in between UP and USD. Pretty, pretty much a, a, a sure thing when Martin Reyes heads to the line. 14, uh, let's see, how many points is Martin Reyes? 14 points for him today. Looking for his 15th point. And I gave him the commentator's jinx with, uh, <laughs> with praising him on his free throw. Derek Teng, though, with the save. Attacking all the way by himself, doesn't get it to go, rims out, and it will stay with UST. Well, you see UST now putting the pressure. They feel they have the guns ablaze here at this point in the third quarter. UP has not bought a field goal for more than four minutes now. It's still just a two-possession ball game, and with the way that UST shoots three-pointers, anything can happen. Speaking of three, Whoa, right at you, right at you, partner. Kasim Mirza strikes it home, 63 to 60. Woo! Now, beautiful play there by Kasim Mirza, showing that he has the chops to make a difference here today. And UP has to respond. It has come close, only 12 points scored here by UP in the third, while USD has gone back roaring courtesy of Kasim Mirza. Kasim Mirza, seven points in this quarter, but the three was the biggest so far here today. Padilla looking for a pick from season. Call high post, working in travels. And the USD has a chance to cut the lead down to one or even tie at this point. Well, really the problem there for her would be he needs to get that space, that bump, so he needs to dribble and not force it in possession. Whoops. Derek Dang for three. Oh, oh it and counts. the basket! It counts. He'll head to the line to finally take the lead as USD will try and finally make the comeback real. Jarek Tang with his third three-pointer here today. Season could not contain his momentum, bumping into Jarek Tang, who was really square to take that shot. Aboy, Coach Aboy Castro rather will call a timeout. This timeout is brought to you by Samsung. With Samsung, imagination lives. I think we all need a breather after what we've been watching. He's got to put up some more. The Reyes guys are uh, not related. Martin Reyes and Mig uh, Miguel, or Mikey Reyes, are our Jollibee Yum doubles duo candidate. Enjoy the best things in life. Derek Tang will head to the line now with a chance to finally take the lead for UST. What do you think was 
Coach Aboy Castro's mindset going in to that last timeout. Well, they need to execute again. They have not won a basket from the field. The last point coming from the free throw line, courtesy of Martin Reyes. In the case of a USD, you know, Derek Teng, Kasim Mirza, they're on the roll. It's a career. Well, Derek Teng. Derek Teng's career high was 20 against FU, where he shot 7 for 12 from the field goal, uh, from the field rather, and he now has 18 with one whole period to go. Padilla driving out to Braganza for three, no good, and still UP gone dry as the desert. Derek Dang now driving, taking it all by himself. He's fouled and he'll head to the line for two, which will give him a chance to give USD a three-point lead and tie his career high so far in his very, very young but bright career. Derek Dang, more than the skill, you've got to look at the the concentration of the young man. Is that the fourth foul on Padilla? Fourth foul on Padilla. He's only had six points here today. As you take a look now at our Powerade Hyper Play of the quarter. Drink up, power up. Sports is what you make it. That double clutch move by Jarek Tang. And he makes the first free throw. Adding a little cushion to that lead is now two points. And he is four for four from the line. Very sweet situation here for Jarek. 80 points, 8 boards, more importantly, USD to the driver's seat. Three-point advantage for the Tigers. So Derek Dang with those two free throws ties his career high. 66 to 63 is the score. Two minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And like what we were saying, Professor, UST is playing their game. Yes, exactly. They're doing what they need to do to win a game and what they usually do to win. All of a sudden, you, you'll be trying to find somebody who's going to give them a field goal and, you know, take out, take out this, this stall that, that's coming into their game. Lopez for three, no good. Padilla can't get that offensive rebound and USD as usual running, but it's thrown away. Derek Tango regains possession and Fortuna will set it up with 16 on the shot clock. Last two minutes here in the third quarter. Dylan Ababu driving, double team off oh, of the glass. Oh, wow. And the lead is now up to five. 22 to three is the run for USC in the last six minutes of play. And definitely, this is USC's ball game we're watching. UP stunned. Woody call for three, gets it in. And finally, ending that run, 20, that 22 to three run in the third quarter. You gotta look for the captain of uh, UP. That's Woody Kaur. And what's common between him and Derek Day? They're from Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Tank trying to look for Ababu, but there was a foul called on Carlo Gomez, I believe. You know, what they try to do is get the goat really of Dylan Ababu. That's why they're playing an in your face defense. First it was Ruena, now it's Gomez trying to give Ababu you know, uh, the tight defense. That three pointer by Woody Cole is caught on our Smart Instant Replay. We're helping sports. Stopping the run, more importantly, was that three. Dylan Ababu now to the line for two. He's now three for five. Making it four for six. For Tur, very much uh, conscious. Dylan very Ababu, much, very much ab conscious. About, about his game. One who's unconscious, I think, in this quarter is Kasim Mirza and Jerry Ting. Who were just shooting the lights out of uh, UP. That's why they have an advantage, 69 to 66. After trading by as much as 14 here in the third. Dylan Ababu now with 20 points to go along with Jerry Ting's 20 points. And that 40 points has been big for UST. Woody Cole into Gomez, rather. Martin Reyes for three. Drills it in. No, he doesn't. It rims out and That's going to be a loose ball foul on Gomez. He was late in trying to snatch that ball away from Chris Camus. Is it already becoming frustration time for UP? I mean, they know that they can win. They, they've battled against the big-time teams. What? I mean, is this already frustration fouls that we're seeing for UP? Well, the good thing is it's just a third quarter. Yes. And uh, a minute and 03 remaining here. Whatever we're saying, they should still recover and probably the break could get. Remember, these are the young guys. You talk about Gomez, you talk about Uena. Uh, they've never been into this situation. A style of ball game this, this is. They were in control and look at the same weird style. This is his quarter together with Jerry, with Jerry Tech. So they're in control. Four of five from the free throw line is Kasim Mirza. More importantly, he has found the touch. They're on top, 71-66. Looking at the scores, Aaron, this is UST's 
Average game. Another, another average game. Another miraculous mirrors a moment there. Oh, yes. Hanging on the rim. But finally drops for him. He's got 14 points here in today's game as Big Dasis comes in for UP. Braganza with less than a minute to go. Woody go. Jarek Tang taps the ball and there's, I believe uh, it'll just stay with UP. No foul call. Look at that Jarek Tang. He's covering the best shooter in UP. That's uh, Martin Reyes. Clark Bautista getting ready to check in. Mark Urwena. Back to Mark Reyes. Into Woody Gold. Gets that hook shot wow. to go. Going back goal. to what they do best. Yeah, they really money in the back. Now. This is the captain. This is the captain. No question. The former rookie of the year, Woody Gold, is the captain. As Jared, far as UB is concerned. Jared Fortuna looking for Kasim Mirza in the post. Bodied up by Mark by Biggs Diazis. Out to Jarek Dang. Pumping, six on the shot clock. Pull up jumper, fouled, no basket. And he'll head to the line for two more. Kasim Mirza in the first half only had three points, one for five from the field, one for two from the free throw line. In the third quarter, 11 points, three for five from the field, and four for four from that charity strike. Jarek Dang. Very comfortable. Five or five shooting for Jarek Dang. Coach Pido Arencio in control here with 26.3 seconds remaining in the third. Jarek Teng now surpasses his career high, setting a new one with 21 points with a, with a chance to make it 22 as you look at Dylan Ababu who's been so hot they had to put an ice bag <laughs> on his head. <laughs> That's the great description part. <laughs> you cannot miss that one. Jarek Teng with uh, two free throws, 22 points for him. 21 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Woody Cole will look to make this the last possession. But Chris Camus again, UST, making sure that they have the last shot. Camus off of the board, no good, but he'll head to the line for two more free throws. You know, you know, Woody Cole just wouldn't let go of Chris Camus. And it's a turn of Camus to say, hey, partner, that was strong. <laughs> exactly the same thing that happened earlier to uh, to Clark Bautista and yes. Maggie Reyes. As you take a look now at that steal, which was caught on our Smart Instant Replay, we're helping sports. Mikey Reyes did a crossover, stolen by Clark Bautista, got a free got a free layup at the other end. Same thing happened here. Chris Camus making the first of his two free throws, making it seven points, cushioning for UST. So for two straight quarters now, UST finishing strong. Trying to come back in the second period here, trying to pad some more in the advantage that they did. 76-68. The highest output by a rookie this season before this game was RV Bring Us against USD, where he scored 21. Jarek Tank now with 22. And the ball will stay with UP with 2.5 seconds to go. UP just lost the uh, the mojo here to you with one of it here in the third period. They have the swagger, they have the game in control, even at the start of the third period. But UST very resilient, coming back, getting their shots, and boy, what an explosion here. 76 to 68, 2.5 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Woody Cole for the inbound pass, finds Huruena. Pull up for three, not even close, so that will do it. An eight point lead UST has at the end of three quarters of play, but you cannot count out the UP Fighting Maroons. Tomorrow, of course, is the big day. UE will be taking on FEU at 11.30 a.m. here and the Iron at the Coliseum, but there will be a uh, short delay as the telecast will be at 2 p.m. And, of course, at 4 p.m., the matchup that everybody's been waiting for, DLSU will be taking on the Ateneo de Manila University Blue Eagles. Yep, we talk about uh, Ateneo and La Salle. Uh, on Thursday, uh, just for our friends in Cebu who are watching, uh, Mayong Hapon Kaninyong Tanan, the scribes, the sports scribes, watching, covering the UAAP for the Cebu Daily. And then you have the other coaches and assistant coaches watching. Good afternoon. They have an Ateneo La Salle golf tournament this oh. coming Thursday in Cebu. So to our friends from De La Salle and from Ateneo, Mayong Hapon ulit sa inyong tanan. Jerry Fortuna to Chris Camus to start it off. Stolen and the UP. 
They have started very strong in all of the quarters. And speaking of which, let's take a look now at our quarter scorings. What do you see there? Well, you see the third quarter is USD's quarter. UP scoring is dipping every quarter. 31-20-17. USD is appreciating 21-23-32. That's why they have an eight-point advantage. Here's a tough Whoa -ho! Whoa -ho! Juan Carmelo making that Juan. pass look beautiful. Coming from Kasim Mirza. 78 to 68 now. Double digit lead for USD. Their biggest lead of the game. Wow, and you know what a third quarter. I'm just looking at some stats here in A Rod. Three throws, 13 of 13 for USD in the third. Only one turnover for USD. Wow. And four turnovers for UP. That's enough for them to turn the tide into their favor. USD now up by 10. Fortuna trying to make a fancy pass. Through traffic, no good, and a turnover as UP will try and set it up. Ruena to Lopez. Rudy Go from downtown strikes it in. Oh, he just doesn't want to quit. 78 to six, uh, 71, his third three pointer of the game. 23 points to follow up his 22 from last game. Missed there by Beno Aflang, and UP will try and slow it down to what the tempo that they are comfortable with. Woody Cole decides to pull up from deep, no good. And Fortuna will, will start this play up for USD. Clark Bautista from deep, no good. And Braganza will regain that possession. UP really needs to take advantage of the situation right here. Oh, yeah, every, every possession is, is needed here for UP. They're, they're under pressure, they're down by seven points, but that's manageable. But they gotta show some character here in the fourth, show resiliency that they can come back. Braganza to Huruena. Decides to bring it back out. Woody call from three again. No good. You know, it's nothing but air. You know, exclusively going to Woody call. The other yeah, guys would need to be responsible of what's going on. You know, I think perhaps could be starting to settle on Woody call. As you take a look now at our clear precision, stop clear men, no dandruff, just cool hair. Good steal by uh, Alvin Badilla, and uh, that steal by Mark Lopez on the next possession. Let's send it over now to Ricky Flores for this Samsung courtside update. Uh, Ricky? The Fighting Maroons are no stranger to being up one minute and down the next, which is why they are pouring their heart and soul out on this final stretch. The boys do not want a repeat of the UE UP game. Coach Aboy pinpointed that the Maroons are doing wrong, and that is their lack of defensive intensity. Masyadong mababa itong iangat natin guys, he said. Offensively, due to their unlucky streak from the three-point area, the Maroons are looking to, to dominate the paint as they did in the first half. Aaron? Thank you for that report, Ricky. Woody, uh, Woody Kwa now. Back-to-back -back games uh, with 23, uh, yeah, 23 points the last game, uh, I'm sorry. 23 points again today, four rebounds. Wow, and you know, Mark Lopez called for an offensive foul in the last play. Ababu is standing his ground. As well, we take a look now at that play, and it's caught on our Smart Instant Replay. We're helping sport. Great move by Dylan Ababu to just stand his ground, take the hit. Really, the game of Mark Lopez, he has to check, he has to understand that there are days that you need to pull up, you need to stop or take the perimeter, and that case he just went for the turn. Chris Gamos stops the ball away, but it's recovered by UP. Stolen oh. almost in UP. As Padilla finds out, oh, Mikey Reyes from deep. Yes. Yes. What a game! What a game we're having right now! Tit for tat, our both teams as Mikey Reyes makes his third three pointer. 74 to 78 is the score. Just two possessions separate them as Kasim Mirza can't get it to go. And Mikey Reyes now off and running himself. Spin move. Foul, and he'll head to the line for two, and he is loving the game that he's having right now. Let's send it over now to see how USC is going to make some adjustments as Patch Gonzana gives us this Samson courtside update. Patch? I was talking to Coach Pedro Harentro a while ago, and he said that after this first round, you'll be expecting a brand new USC Tigers. He said na para daw silang computer na ni Rere program, going back to the basics ang team just like before. You just have to keep the ball in motion. You have to be patient. There is still this quarter. You have to maintain the lead. We are finally in the game. This is because of the run by Kazim Mirza, Dylan Ababu, and Jarek Tang. 28 points combined. Be consistent. Work up to the last second. Let's win this fight, boys. Aaron? Thank you for that report, Patch. It's all coming down, really, to end game execution. 
Yes, and the, the heart. And, you know, career games. Look, look at that Jerry thing. You're looking at Mike Reyes. Rudy Go is up for a career high in terms of number with 6 and 38 remaining in the ball game. Oh, oh, oh answers right oh, back oh, with a three pointer of his own, building this lead up to six points. Lopez back to him, driving. Looking for Huerna. Huerna turns the ball over, veers off and running, finds Dylan Ababu. And Dylan says, let's slow it down just a little bit. We have a six point lead. Let's take some smart shots as Mirza pulls up from deep. No basket. And Ababu with offense. Whoa, off whoa. Of the pass. 83 to 75 is the score. You know, Dylan is fisting on offensive boards and put backs in this ball game. That's how he started his offense in the first quarter. And he continues to do that up in the lead eight. 22 points for him, Padilla, Mikey Reyes for three. Cuts it in, 21 oh, yes. points! Woo, Mikey Reyes to go along with his five rebounds and five assists. So the rookies just going at each other here today. And that's why when I asked him, how does it feel to be starting and you're a rookie, he said, oh yeah, it yeah. it feels good. It clears out. Yes. Oh, 85 to 78, both teams showing tremendous heart, not giving up here today. I'm looking at the scores, Aaron. 85 USD, UP 78. These are the average numbers if you look at the stats of USD at the top of our coverage. Moruena now, well basically, turns the ball over rather USD to set it up with five minutes and six seconds remaining on the clock. Jared Deng, rookie against rookie right now. Deng, into Dylan. Oh, throws the ball away. And UP has a chance to cut the lead down to either five or four points. As we take a look now at this Maasan assist brought to us by PS Bank, Sikli Lang Maasan. Wow, great Beautiful assist there pass. by, uh, by uh, Dylan and Bob. Huh? That's just familiarity between the two of them. Padilla to Martin Reyes for three. Doesn't get it to go. Magic sees it. Can't get the rebound if Dylan Ababu will. You know, he's, he's, so, he's so cool whenever you know, he's calculated. He just gets the ball as if nothing's going on around him. Yes. Dylan Ababu looking for Kasim in the paint, but he's fouled by Martin Reyes. Well, good recognition there of the advantage. Fourth foul of Martin Reyes. Beers a good two, three inches taller than Martin Reyes. Four minutes and 30 seconds remaining in this game as you take a look at our Caltex fast break. Caltex with the unbeatable power, a uh, cleaning power of Techron. And uh, with that, we'll go to a timeout brought to us by Samsung with Samsung Imagination Lives. crowd loving the game right now going crazy and even some supporters of Adamson staying around just to watch it as you see Francis Aliera on your screen the one who's wearing the captain Francis Aliera. yes he lighted up the scoreboard last year oh yes UST the inbound Almost a five second Great. call, but Chris oh. Ramos with the in and out play. Mikey Reyes doesn't see Martin Reyes ahead. He does a little too late. And he, Martin Reyes will keep possession. Luckily, that steal by Jerry Dane wasn't completed. The four and twin were remaining. A lot of basketball. Here. Exciting basketball yes. here on. But we're seeing 85 USC, 78 for UP. Just both teams shooting the lights out here today. Padilla to Mikey Reyes, drives. Padilla taps it to Magic yes. Season and the free throw line jumper is good. Five point lead now for USD. UP looking for just one more stop at this point. Kasim Mirza finds Gamos. Back to Mirza, driving, pull up, jumper. No good, and Gamos with yes. the offensive pull up. Yes. And offensive cleanup, as you mentioned, UP not boxing out properly, giving opportunities for UST to stretch the lead to seven. Padilla to Mikey Reyes, who's having a career game right now. Looking for a pick for Magic Season. Brings it back out to Reyes for three. No good. Magic Season, offensive board, and he'll head to the line for two. What we mentioned, this could be a chance for Magic Season 
properly impose himself. There's yes. nobody who would look at Banji Sisa on the U.S. side eye to eye. And I think he should start it's imposing it's himself. Here offensively, fourth foul on Dylan Ababu. Four fouls on Dylan Ababu, so that is going to be a problem as you see that put back on our Smart Instant Replay. We're helping sports. Now that Dylan has four fouls, he's going to have to play a little bit more tentatively on the on the defensive end. So would you be attacking him at this point? Well, that, that's an option, looking at uh, who's being covered by Dylan Ababu. But remember, the guy is an experienced player. Yes. Right? You don't just pull the trigger on him and it might backfire on you. Might as well go and rotate the ball in offense. Do some patience. And if the guy of uh, Dylan is, is okay and he can drive through, and why not? That, you want to take out the best guy, the most experienced guy on the floor of the UST now is going to take advantage of Magic Season not taking care of business when it comes to his free throws. Pierza to Jerry Tang. Pull up from deep. Can't get it. But Kamu taps it over to Magic Season. Double team now. And the ball tapped off from Season's leg and it'll stay with UST. Good pressure there at the corner. Jerry Tang and Kamu's not giving up even if Magic Season was holding on to the other. Magic should have released that ball when he saw that there's a double team coming in. And the emergency pass should have been made available to him. 24 seconds on the shot clock, fresh 24 for UST. Ababu gets possession. Mirza for three. Doesn't get it. And now UST might want to attack the inside instead of shooting those long bombs with an eight with a seven-point lead. It's not the best shot that Mirza took. He was just feeling it when he saw the opportunity. That could be a foul. Foul on oh, oh. that could be second most between uh, Maji Season. Temper starting to flare for both sides as Chris Camus gets called for the foul. Oh, but, uh, the foul was already whistled. Uh -huh. Then look at Maji Season. Nai tawag na yun eh. Meron pa nun eh. Yeah. That's the point. And what Camus is saying, there was a second motion. And that was caught on our Smart Instant Replay. We're helping sports. No call though on the, on the second motion. So. And there's no free throw because they're not in the penalty, just a regular foul given up by U.S. It's still a seven-point advantage, time running down to 48. Would he go back in the game? Padilla driving and finally converts, putting the lead back down to five. He has eight points here in the game. First basket in the second half. Well, no, first basket since the, sec since the first quarter. Here's up. Looking for Fortuna, has the ball stripped away. Mikey Reyes, out to Martin Reyes for three. Strikes yes. it in. Wow, what a play there. The Kings are on top. The Reyes. Mikey and the Martin. <laughs> Four three-pointers for Martin Reyes. Jarek Fortuna now looking to stop the bleeding. Mirza, Tocamos, wide open, pull-up jumper. No good. And we head into our last two minutes brought to us by PS Bank. Steve Lelang, Maasai, Magic Season, Butterfingers oh. that ball. And it will go back to UST. You know, you'll be saying, well, Mikey should have called the play for us instead of insisted on that ball pass to uh, Season. You know, just, just to excite you a bit there, well, these two teams have had experience of overtime this week. Two overtime UST Lasalle, UP lost an overtime game to UE. We'll see if that's going to come into play today because both of them are used to it pretty much already <laughs> at this point. And on low, Padilla now and Tank, uh, Parker, they're having some conversations. Tempers are really starting to flare. Both teams getting a little testy at this point. Fourth foul on Alvin Padilla. Dylan Ababu will head to the line for two free throws. One minute and 38 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. I don't want to say the game because we don't know what's going to happen at this point. We're going to see 87. Uh, that's nothing new. Yeah, they're pretty UB, much UB 85. That's new for them, but the opponent of UST, yeah. that's, nothing, that's nothing new. I mean, they, they do allow a lot of points, but they do score a lot. So they, they pretty much balances out here. Five for seven is Dylan Ababu from the line. Looking to capitalize. Gets the first one, so six for eight from the line now for him. Giving him 23 points wow, 
in today's game. We saw Danny Office for, uh, for Dylan Ababu. 23 points for Dylan Ababu, 22 for Derek Dang, 19 for Kasim Mirzad. All three of them just taking care of business. 88 to 85 is the score. One minute and 38 seconds remaining. Dylan makes it, oh, misses it, but Mirza with the offensive rebound. Missing the opportunity to make it a double, uh, a two possession ball game. Ababu, guarded by Woody Cole. Trying, steps back out with the double team, finds Mirza, back out to Ababu, driving. Hook shot doesn't go in an offensive foul. Oh. Called on Dylan Ababu plus giving him his fifth foul, fouling him out with one minute and 19 seconds remaining in the game. Look at this one. He was a tough one. Oh, he was planted. Yep, and Padilla just saw that, you know, there's no way that Ababu's gonna stop with the fly. And of course, that was caught on our Smart Instant Replay. We're helping sports. Dylan Ababu. Falling out, this could be the time where they will need him the most. It's an option, remember, that the triangle that we're, we're talking about, Mirza, Teng, and Ababu. Now, one leg of the triangle is gone in Dylan Ababu. We got to look for Teng in uh, Mirza in terms of play. But, of course, don't count out Camus. He's, he's there also for his team. Padilla to Mikey Reyes. Swings it back to him. Pull up from three, no good. And USD will regain possession. So less than a minute to go. Three point lead for USD. Mirza gets it back out to Fortuna, who sets it up, does the smart thing, and slows the game down. Jarek up to Thomas now. Mirza, top of the key, five on the shot clock. I don't think he notices it. Pulls up from deep and he trades it in. Wow, wow. Lead back up to six. The miracle man. Third three-pointer of the game, giving him 22 points. And with that, we have a timeout brought to us by Samsung. Yeah, 91-85. This is a session game. They have to score it, otherwise it's bye-bye for them. This is the first time in this season that three players have scored 20 or more points on one team. Mikey Reyes now. Needs to set the play up as quick as possible. The time is not on UP side at this point. Padilla, guarded by Mirza with the pick. Padilla curling, Mikey Reyes for three. No good. And the USC with the, with the rebound. And that will pretty much do it. Wow. Foul on uh, Mikey Reyes. So Mirza will head to the line with 17.2 seconds to go. And a point of stand put up by UP. First half, it was all UP. They scored 41 points. In the second half, look at the production of USD. 91 points. They have recovered for 14 points down in the yes. third period. 16 points. 16 points. That's the biggest lead. Yep. UP now still had one foul to give, and there's a timeout call by Coach Bill Huh? Quite that. So there you go. But well, Aaron, they just wanted the inbound to yeah. come in as correct as possible. That's what they're setting up screens for Jerry Tech to receive the ball. And I like the point that Pierce point out. You have to move quickly, so I'm just you allow. Because if you're tentative and a little bit complacent, there is a chance for UP to snatch possession and get uh, a chance, a window of opportunity for them to strike a three. Kasim Mirza to inbound. Pick Fortuna to get it. Running away from Mikey Reyes, and he's fouled finally, burning off three seconds off of the clock. Yeah, it looks bleak, really, for, for you. Be two free throws for Jerry. So mathematically, still possible. But look at this big shot. That three pointer by Kasim Mirza. Oh no, which was the putback, rather, by Chris, Chris Camos, Camos, is our Powerade Hyperplay of the game. Drink up, power up. Sports is what you make it. You know, a lot of those putbacks, you know, that we've seen, Camos, Gina, and Bob, even Mirza had some putbacks here in the ball game. And really, what an extension. It's really taken a toll against UP. They have some momentum, and then somebody snatches the offensive board. And for Maji season, what a tough afternoon for him. And he wasn't really scoring very well, but you have to stay put. Forty seconds remaining. We were talking about Kasim Mirza earlier, so uh, let's take a listen now to uh, the UP Hub. 
Yep, the UP will, they are anticipating the, the, what happens in the situation if Fortuna makes the second free throw. There is nothing like a huddle <laughs> with Coach Kudo Harecha. He remembered what PJ Barula did yeah. to him in overtime and he doesn't want any of those again. That, that's, a, that's a nightmare. We were, talking about, what you know. we were talking about Kasim Pearson earlier. First half only had three points, one for five. Second half, 19 point explosion. Shooting 50%, six for 12 from the field. He gave the punches. He did a Babu one for scoring well in the Of course, they were getting there, but in fact, really, when Yupi was up and about, and it was Pearson's game that was missing. And when he found it, boy, were they in rhythm. Three by Mix Diaz is no good. And a foul will be called on Lopez. And Clark Bautista will take two free throws with 4.9 seconds remaining. UST was one of the most important win foul in seven games, giving it a good, uh, good position going to the second round. Of course, they'll be watching what will happen to the game of Yui against Epi in the game of La Salle against Ateneo. They'll be very happy to see probably Yui and La Salle lose tomorrow yes. so that UST will be tied for third and fourth places yeah. with uh, Yui and the La Salle. So a lot of work in store for them in the second round. They're, they're bringing the wheel together with, uh, with Adamson. One, six. But they need at least for six games and they would have to hope that things would be in the paper and no more interfere for the second round. So there you go, that's it. There's the final buzzer, 95 to 85 is the score. The end of the first round for both of these teams as, F, as uh, UST will take out a very hard fought win here today. Well, they, they came back from the green. Uh, but you know, I think Coach Vido wasn't panicking when he saw the score ah, 44 points for us. That's our game. That's our game. The 51 of UP, that's an aberration. This is not going to go on the low of average. It will, will catch up and indeed, it, it caught up with UP. 95 to 85 is the score. UST 3 and 1 now this season when they reach 90 plus points. And now you see on your screens our Jollibee champ of the game, Dylan Ababu, with 23 points leading. The USD Growling Tigers to this win. Big burger goodness like no other. We're going to cut to a short break, but when we come back, more of the end game awards to be handed out here on Studio 23. It's uh, a very, very big win for UST with uh, a 95 to 85 win. And now we take a look at our best player, our Masa a Maasan player, Jerick Deng. PS Bank simply learned Maasan. Professor, your choice. Well, you, you gotta give it to Jerick. Huh? He was almost best player Sunday had they won that ball game over La Salle. But I gotta give it to Jerick, you know. What a game, he played. <laughs> all, the, all the double clutch shots, even making three pointers. but. Most of all, it was those free throws. He was clutch from the charity strike. <laughs> <laughs> Jarek Tang uh, leading the way. Well, the, the best player, rather, for UST. And now let's take a look at our fit and right burning move, our turning point, a most refreshing way to burn. And Professor, your choice. Wow. Clearly. Clearly. And you know, there's the question. This three-point shot just broke the back of UP. The fight was taken out from the fighting rules. Yes. Yes, it was. And that was the, the dagger, so to speak when it comes to today's game. And now you take a look at our Jollibee Young Doubles duo. Enjoy the best things in life. Dylan Ababu and Kasim Mirza. 23 points, seven boards, two assists for Dylan. 22 points, eight boards, and two assists for Kasim Mirza. 